There was no doubt that I was going to pick up the new Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette and today I'm bringing you my review and couple eyeshadow looks, comparison swatches, everything demo in natural light and 4K quality. In fact, I got it on the early access at Sephora and I know that right now I think it's available at other retailers so I will be leaving all those details in the description box below along with the links for your convenience and easy shopping, the details of the rest of my makeup and whatnot. Everything will be again on the description box below. Thank you so much to all of you who decide to shop through my links. And if you're new here to my channel, welcome. Welcome to all of you, my beautiful friends. I film in natural light in front of a big window with a 4K camera. It's a little bit cloudy, gloomy, um, it's still humid because I live in California and we just had um, Hillary passing by and it's just a little bit of a weird kind of weather. But anyhow, nothing takes away my joy and excitement to try this palette. I have been a lover of the Glam palette since the moment it came out and also of the I Need a Nude lipsticks. In fact, and by the way, um, I purchased all of the shades. I swatched them all here on my channel and I swatched them also on my Instagram, actually on my former Instagram account, which... I, is it still hopefully by by the time that I'm uploading this video is is up and running but it's it got suspended so I have a new backup account anyhow and Natasha Denona she has that picture of all of the swatches on my arm on her Instagram if I find the picture I will put it right here but yeah it's fun to, it's just fun anyhow friends let's go ahead and what you came for the review of this baby I will be doing swatches comparisons but this is the midi size the palette is gorgeous made in Italy nude tones some cool tones with a pop of warm tones too so there is a mix of neutrals right here too I'm excited. Let's go first with the shade Stone, a matte shade, Whisper, which is a metallic shade, Ella, which is a sparkling foil shade, Stone, Whisper, Ella, Oof. soft. The next three shades, Vogue, Travertine Metallic, Delilah, a sparkling wet effect, Silhouette, a matte shade, Muse, a sparkling foil. Oh my gosh. Now this formulation is the same one that we saw in the Glam Face palettes of the holidays of 2021. These ones, well, I have the other one right here, but I'm just trying to keep this matte shade, which is called Fair Alive. Here we go. Shade Fair is a matte shade. Filigree, a sparkling foil. Oh my gosh. Wheat a matte shade, sheen a sparkling wet glossy effect, Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh those are beautiful, tender matte, mesh matte, and last Mia, a sparkling wet effect, oh this is a dream of a palette, definitely I have to use Mia, my oldest daughter is named Mia, but this shade, I think this is Muse right? It's so incredible foil. Oh my. Now the shades here, they do have more of a taupey undertone and tone in general. Some of them, they are cool tone, but in the most part, I see that they are more of like a neutral kind of undertone. Not too cool, not too warm. And you have a couple warm shades that you can work with over here too, and then a lot of pink undertone across the board. BK Beauty 201 brush, and I'm gonna go to the shade Fair. I always dust it off regardless of which brand it is, and I'm just gonna dust it above the crease and on the crease. Next shade, Mesh, with a classic crease from Sonia G. And then I'm taking it on the outer third and also on the crease. Just gonna work at it slowly. This is a gorgeous shade and it does have that cool neutral dusty rose pink. 
very intriguing this all over the eyelid squeeze it BK Beauty 201 brush in the shade Tender and I'm just taking it on the outer V there's no fallout Sonia G Builder Pro in the shade Delilah now this has a lot of dimension throughout there's little sparkles of shine Smith 253 brush and the shade Mia and I'm taking this shade and applying it from the inner corner all the way until it meets to the other shade so beautiful now if you want to intensify you can either wet it or just use your finger because obviously using your fingers you're gonna get this type of shine you see this is very delicate and feminine I'm gonna take the shape mesh I'm running it on my lower lash line Sonia G flat definer and the shade tender and I'm applying it on the outer third of my lower lash line and here you have it, the first look BK Beauty 202 brush and I'm gonna go to the shade Wheat and I'm taking it above the crease and on the outer V that blended so easy now this shade to this shade they are a little bit close but this one is a little bit deeper so I'm going to Vogue and I'm taking it on the outer third BK Beauty 211 brush and the shade Silhouette and I'm going to take it to the outer V and smoke it Sonia G Builder Pro and I'm going to go to the shade Filigree Smith 253 brush and the shade Muse oh my gosh look at this it's gorgeous and this is completely dry but I'm applying it this is ultra wet you know what let's do it with a finger so we can amplify <laughs> yes yes <laughs> let's go for it amazing amazing so good <laughs> so good no words perfect lower lash line with a shade whip Sonia G Flat Definer and Silhouette. On this eye look, I actually use a pencil on my waterline that is brightening. But on this side, because it's a little bit more smoky, more deep, I'm going to use something that is a little bit more dark. Hourglass. I'm using one of my favorite mascaras, Isum. Now let's go to the shade sheen and I'm using a refer 03 brush and I'm just gonna apply it on my inner corner oh, it's so beautiful just to open up a little bit more there the area and a little bit on the brow bone now for this side I'm gonna use the shade Mia and oh, inner corner Rub on two different eyeshadow looks one that is a little bit more subdued something that you can wear it you know morning afternoon even evening is very classy very tender and this one which is a little bit more smoky a little not loud just it's more intense more than anything obviously it can get even louder than this but I would just play with whatever I feel comfortable also with the shape of my eyes and my hooded eyes. You tell me which of these two eyeshadow looks you like the most. And if you're wondering if you can make more subtle eyeshadow looks with this palette, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you have many, like from here to here. 
I will say suggest going here, here, here at the most. Don't use any of the deeper shades. Same thing with this shade right here, this shade. I mean, like you have a lot of versatility with this eyeshadow palette. Natasha Denona, she is a master of color stories. To me, she reigns supreme. I am super happy that Natasha Denona really has kept her brand to her soul, to the sh things that she likes, because not to criticize Pat McGrath because I love her artistry. I know she's an amazing artist. It's not that, it's that I feel that, and I'm sorry to bring Pat McGrath right here, but I feel like she has started with her mothership palettes being amazing. And then the last two years, she has kept us in a rose theme. While with Natasha, we see a little bit of everything. We want greens, there you go, some greens. You want cool tones, there's some cool tones. You want warm tones, you have warm tones. She's just truly really a master on color stories. And I'm telling you, this eyeshadow palette, it's a great companion to the glam palette. Very different, though. although they can be in the same family, she's not bringing us anything that is repetitive. There's no repetition right here. This is another take of a cool tone, neutral tone eyeshadow palette. So that being said, let's go for comparisons. So I have here the glam palette, and here it is, I need a nude palette. You see, the Glam palette, it has just a few sprinkles here of pink. It has a little bit of gold, a little bit more champagne. Um, I feel that, that I need a nude palette. It's more nudey in that sense that you get more pinks and taupes in it. A little bit different. Some of you have also mentioned this eyeshadow palette by Makeup by Mario, which was limited edition. And I have to tell you that perhaps on the foil shades, there's a little bit of similarities, but I feel that the Makeup by Mario, yes, they are gorgeous, wet looking, but it's another type of formulation. Even a little bit more thin, I should say, and not really powdery, but translucent. It, they don't carry a ton, a ton of pigmentation. I'm just not doing, you know, like trying to do that right here. I'm just trying to show you really close the details and the difference between the finish. And this shade right here in particular from this Makeup by Mario is not really that foil shade. It's something a little bit more typical of a satiny borderline metallic. But do you see right here what I'm saying? The ones from Natasha Denona carry more pigment, while the ones from Makeup by Mario, they are more translucent. They give you that wet look, absolutely, no doubt about it, but they don't carry as much pigment. Another couple brands are the new YSL eyeshadows. So if you have tried it, these are one of my favorite formulations from this year. They just launched several different color stories but again, this wet kind of look, the mattes in here are just so creamy, so amazing. They, they honestly are worth every penny to my point of view. And look at this. You see that foil wet? Now these ones, they carry a little bit more pigment than the Makeup by Mario, but not as much as the Natasha Denona. And then another ones that they come to my mind that I just review are, for example, the new Tom Ford Tropical Dusk Eyeshadow Palette from the Soleil Collection. Also wet looking. Another one from Tom Ford, Rose Topaz. This one is the eye creme formulation now if you have touched the eye creme formulation from tone 4 now i can tell you that that's very very alike to the natasha denona one obviously you get a lot more shades <laughs> than whatever you will get into a tone 4 quad the tone 4 quads are definitely more expensive and even then i feel natasha denona is giving us that wet look that is extremely intense, very, very hard to find in a powder type of formulation. And then we have Patrick Tan. Now, this is a more warm tone palette, 
but if you're wondering i think you know it's fair to go ahead and swatch a few So you can see there's two right there. And then I'm just gonna put one right here. I hope that you're following me on this comparison because honestly, I'm not trying to give you, oh, exact do, because I, I just feel like, you know, there's a uniqueness on the palette of Natasha Denona, but I want you to see the actual finish, the formula, how like how different they are and if you're into this vibe to have a wet look on your eyelids that looks just like more than mesmerizing no fallout and more pigment well Natasha Denona just delivered this is it this is it I mean performance I started this video with my foundation on there's no fallout, easy application, blend like a dream, super like airbrush, airbrush. And I have hooded eyelids. I have folds on my eyelids. And there's no, that's another thing that Natasha Lenona mentioned it too, that with this formulation, mostly with this one, Muse, she wanted to achieve something that it was non-creasing. And she she's delivering that. She's delivering high quality product right here. High, high quality. And you also have the option, as usual, on the back, you can just pop out these shades and create your own very unique palette if you want to combine with other eyeshadow palettes of Natasha Denona, something that is more you, you can do so. Definitely this one is more subdued than the Glam palette and you can do much more. If there's anything that I would have done different from Natasha Denona, I mean, who am I, right, <laughs> to say that? Perhaps because there's such a beautiful, cool tone pink on this Mia eyeshadow, I will have replaced it. Not replaced Mia, but actually create a matte kind of part to this shade and replace it with this because this shade, I can, you know, kind of make the same kind of shade by mixing this shade and this shade together. And then perhaps doing these two shades, they are not exactly the same, but I will have make perhaps this shade just a little bit deeper, something, something in between these two shades right here. That's my only, not complain, but something that I personally would have done it. But you know, this is her palette and this is amazing. I 100% recommend it. I cannot wait to keep playing with it. Let me know if you have got it. Let me know how you are liking it. And if you haven't got it yet, are you adding it up on your wish list or you are adding it to cart immediately? Let's just continue that conversation in the comment section down below while you're at it. And if you haven't done so yet, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring that post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. It will be incredible if you can come and follow me on my new Instagram account. Hopefully I can get my older Instagram account back because he had 21K followers. So hopefully that happens. And like I said, in the meantime, please come and follow me on my new Instagram account. If you're in TikTok, come and follow me on TikTok. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also share it with family and friends. And until the next time, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.